you will learn how to make these pumpkin rolls just in time for fall. It is a really simple recipe to do, but it does take a lot of ingredients. The first thing you're going to need is some milk that is warmed to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. We are going to use a half a cup or 120 milliliters of warm milk. If you don't have a thermometer that's just lukewarm, when you put your finger in the milk it shouldn't burn you, but it should feel warmer than your body temperature. Now when it comes to warm milk, you don't want to stick fingers in hot liquid to find out if it's too hot. Be smart here. You need one teaspoon of yeast or 3.5 grams. If it is too hot, you want it to cool down before you add in your yeast. If you add yeast in above a certain temperature, it will start to die off. So what I like to do is dissolve the yeast into the milk mixture and just let it sit aside for about five to 10 minutes to ensure the yeast is still active. You'll know that because it'll start to bubble and foam up. The next thing you need is some flour. I like to use all-purpose flour or plain flour. I don't like to use bread flour when it comes to making sweet dough because it tends to be more heavy and chewier. You want a really soft dough and all-purpose flour works great for cinnamon rolls such as these. We're going to use two and one quarter cups or 337 grams. Our spices, we're going to use one half teaspoon of salt, 2.5 grams, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one gram, one half teaspoon of ginger, that's one gram, and one half teaspoon of allspice, one gram. Then we're gonna add in some sugar. This is just gonna help with browning. The pumpkin already has a lot of sugar in it, so we're gonna be a little stingy with the sugar, just two tablespoons or 25 grams. You wanna mix this all together until it's well combined so you get a really lovely dough. For some softness, we're gonna add in one tablespoon of oil, if that's 15 milliliters, you can add any type of oil you like. It can be olive oil, canola, or even melted butter. Next, we're going to add in one egg, which is about 50 grams. This will add in a nice flavor to the dough. And finally, we're going to add in some canned pumpkin. You can make your own pumpkin puree if you want. That is perfectly fine. You're just going to need a half a cup or 120 grams. Make sure to scrape it all out because you want to use all that pumpkin flavor. Now pumpkin in itself doesn't have a strong flavor. It's more sweet than anything. So that's why we add spices to the dough to make it really taste really wonderful and rich. Now that that yeast mixture has set for a while, you're starting to see that it is bubbling up and this is just perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in to the container. Now the reason why we heat up the milk is it just helps the dough rise a little bit faster. You don't have to heat up the milk, but if you don't, it could take more than an hour longer to rise your bread. We're gonna mix this until it's a nice shaggy mess like this. Now you may find this is too difficult to work with initially because it's sticking to your hands like crazy. A simple tip is you can just cover this and leave it sit for five minutes and then come back and work with it. You can also make this in a stand mixer and it's perfectly fine. You need it eight to 10 minutes or until it's stretchy. But we're gonna make this by hand because not everybody has access to a stand mixer. It's been five minutes and as you can see, it's no longer sticking to my hands as much and it's already has a little bit of a stretch to it. So time did some of the work for us. We're gonna scrape this out onto a work surface and then begin to knead it. Some people tell you to oil your bowl, but I have found if you oil your bowl, your dough becomes too oily and it doesn't often rise well. Now, if you try to knead this the traditional way, it's just gonna stick to your hands really a lot. So we're gonna do the slap and fold method where you just slap it down and then you fold it in half and you pick it up. And the faster you go, the less it will stick to your hands. The slower you go, the more it will stick to your hands. But this is a sticky dough, so it's going to stick to your hands no matter what. I want you to give me five minutes of this before you get tempted to add any flour in. I promise it will start to change and it will be easier to work with. Here it is five minutes in. As you can see, it's not sticking to me as much and it's starting to stretch. But if I really try to pull on it, it's going to tear on me. See how it's tearing and it's still sticking if you let it sit too long? Let's just go a little bit longer, about five more minutes, and then check it again. 
Now, if you see, it's not sticking to me as much. It's still a tacky dough, but it's much more stretchable and you can really stretch it out before you can tear it. Now, obviously, if you pull hard enough, you're going to tear dough no matter what. This is ready to go. Again, this is a tacky dough. It's supposed to be sticky doughs are a lot more supple and soft and they just give a really nice crumb, especially to things like cinnamon rolls and dinner rolls. We're going to put it back in our container and we're going to cover it and let it rise until it's about double in size. Now, depending on your climate, this can take 90 minutes to two hours or as little as 30 minutes or even 10 minutes. So just keep an eye on it. You're looking for it to double in volume. We're going to prep a pan, a 9 by 13, and we're going to use a little piece of butter that we are going to use for the filling and just generously grease it all over. Once you get that done, set it aside. And you can wait until your dough is ready before you do this step because if you do it in a hot day and you let it sit there, it's going to just melt on the pan and it's going to end up sticking in the end. You're going to set this aside and then get your filling prepared. You're going to use brown sugar, one quarter cup or 56 grams, two teaspoons of cinnamon, four grams, and one teaspoon of flour or three grams. The flour is in there to help the cinnamon and sugar mixture adhere to the dough and not all just spread out after it bakes. If you've ever had a cinnamon roll where just everything falls out and you don't taste any cinnamon except for on the very bottom and it's all just in the pan, that's why you don't have any flour in your mixture. Add a little bit of flour and it makes a big difference. Also, when you put in this flour, it thickens it up and gives it a nice texture. You're going to set that aside and get your dough ready. As you can see, it has doubled in size and it's nice and pleasantly light. If you push on it hard enough, it'll start to collapse. And that's what you want it to do. You don't want it to collapse immediately if you just barely touch it. But if you press it down, it will collapse on you. That's when you know it's ready. Then we're just going to sprinkle the work surface with just a little bit of flour. I'm using probably about a half a teaspoon's worth of flour here. We are going to shape this into a 9 by 12 inch rectangle or a 23 by 30 centimeters rectangle. And we can use our hands and pat it out if we don't have a rolling pin or we can use a rolling pin. The rolling pin just helps it become more even throughout. But if you don't have a rolling pin, just use your hands and just try to pat it out with your hands as evenly as possible. It is completely okay to not have a rolling pin. Every once in a while, pick up your dough and turn it to make sure it's not sticking to your work surface and let it bounce back a little bit. That will help when you're rolling it up in the end and all the filling won't fall out. This is a really nice and soft dough and it's a pleasure to work with. I like how the pumpkin turns the dough a nice pretty orange color and just gives it a nice fall filling to it. Next we're going to take two tablespoons of softened butter, 28 grams worth, you can use margarine here if you like. You can also use vegetable spread. If Once you have a nice even layer, you're going to put your sugar mixture on top of that. Now, if you can, just leave a little gap at the very bottom of one of the edges on the longest side. That way it will stick better when you roll it up. And then we're just going to roll this up gently but firmly into a nice round log. You'll see what it looks like in just a second. Now, if you did this right, you'll have 12 inches exactly. If you didn't, it'll be a little bit over or a little bit under. That's okay. You just want to have 12 slices in the end as evenly as possible. Take your time here. Don't roll up quickly. You don't want to make a huge mess. I've done it and I have thrown sugar mixture all over the place. Now, if you want, you can use a ruler to get this exactly the way you want it, or you can just eyeball it. I like to use dental floss to cut it, but you can also use a serrated knife. I'm going to show you how to use dental floss in this recipe. You're just going to place it under the dough like so, and then you're going to cross it and then pull it quickly together. The longer your piece of dental floss is, the easier it is to do. All this does is just help you keep a really nice round shape. I like to set part of it aside to make it easier to work with. And I'm just going to do the middle part first so you can see what it really will look like in the middle. And if you do it right, you'll have a pretty little circular piece of dough swirled beautifully like this. You're going to sit it into your pan 
Now, if you don't want to use butter in your pan, you can spray it with nonstick cooking spray. That is perfectly fine. Just make sure that you do coat the pan or it will stick in the end. Now you're going to repeat this 11 more times and space it evenly apart, about an inch apart or so, 2.5 centimeters. What I like to do now is just cover up the dough with some saran wrap and you're going to see me fight with this. I always seem to have issues when I'm using saran wrap. I don't know why. One of these days I might be able to figure it out, but I'm telling you, this is like the bane of my existence. Anyway, you're going to let this sit for about 60 minutes or until double in size. Again, look for the double in size. Don't go by time. You may have to go as far as 90 minutes. You may have to go as little as 10 to 15 minutes. Once it looks like this, you're going to put it into an oven. You want to preheat that oven while these are rising to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. And then you're going to bake them until they're golden brown. Everyone's oven is different. It will take anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. My personal oven takes 22 minutes. If you notice some of them are a little bit smaller than others, that's because I didn't eyeball well. And that's perfectly okay. Nobody cares. I just call those the diet rolls. When they are finished baking, go ahead and flip them upside down and carefully remove that pan and then flip them right side up again and let them cool. This ensures they don't stick to the pan as they cool because that sugar mixture ends up becoming type of caramel and it can just adhere to your pan and get stuck in there. You're gonna let them cool five to 10 minutes before you ice them. If you ice them too early, it's just gonna slide completely off and you're not gonna get to keep your icing. It'll be all over your counter instead. I like to use one cup of powdered sugar, 125 grams, to that, I add in a half a teaspoon or 2.5 milliliters of vanilla extract. And then I add in one to two tablespoons of milk, a teaspoon at a time. That's 15 to 30 milliliters until I get a consistency that looks like this. Now you can double the amount of powdered sugar and milk if you want a lot of icing. But I found this generously glazes the entire pan quite well. But it's up to you. I mean, if you really like glaze, go ahead and have fun. Now, as you can see, I am really bad at glazing things. This is why I don't show you all the steps always, because look at this, I am making a mess. This has to do with my shoulder, and I will never be good at this. So if you have any tips or tricks on how I can learn how to glaze better with a limited range of motion, I would be happy to hear about that. But in the meantime, have fun laughing at the way that I tend to glaze things. It's okay. It still tastes absolutely delicious in the end. And the ones at the beginning, I don't like a lot of glaze on them. So it works out well for me. Let me show you what these look like when you open them up. They are absolutely delicious. I mean, look how soft and tender these are. They just pull apart and they melt in your mouth. These are a wonderful recipe to share with others. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Here are your ingredients if you want to follow along. I know it's a long list. Don't worry. I included a link below as well to give you the full recipe. Thank you for visiting us at jacksonsjob.com. And as always, happy baking.